What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm gonna tint these tail lights on this GMC Sierra. Uh, these tail lights are not as easy as some might think they might be. Uh, these are a bit more difficult and I'm going to explain why. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, ckwrapstoronto.com. I'll put a link up in the top corner for you. Now, if we just look flat on at these tail lights, they look pretty flat. There's a couple of different things about these tail lights which I'm gonna run through. But first of all, we're gonna talk about the products that we need in order to be able to do this job. So you're gonna need a knife, you're going to need a squeegee, you're going to need a soft one and a hard one. Uh, a glove does help, so some kind of a heat resistant glove or something that's gonna glide along the surface, just in case you need it. And we need our vinyl, so today we're doing this in dark smoke tint, but this is by Vivid Vinyl. This is an air release tint, a lot different than a wet application tint. Um, there is a slight texture of orange peel to it because it does have the air release channels in it, but very, it's not even noticeable from like a foot away. So I mean, unless you're looking at anything like this, you're not really gonna see it. Um, but it does come out very clear and very clean. With a wet app tint, it's gonna be very, very, very difficult to do these tail lights. With a dry application tint, with an air release technology, makes it much more possible to do these tail lights or to tint tail lights in general or any lights in general. We're also gonna need, so you get to choose your color here. You can get uh, light smoke, dark smoke, or the hex tint. I'll put links in the description below to all the stuff that I'm using today. We're gonna need some masking tape slash painter's tape, mask off the surrounding area, some 70% isopropyl alcohol, a clean rag, and a heat gun, okay? That's about it. It's not a whole lot of stuff. Everything you can get pretty much on Amazon. Bit um, really basic. We're gonna run through the actual complexity of these tail lights, so I'm gonna bring the camera over for you. What I want you to notice here is the taper in at the top, okay? This taper coming into the top here is a very aggressive taper. This means that we have to stretch the film around right here quite a bit in order to have the film hug in at the top and the bottom. So the bottom also has it, not quite as aggressive, but it's a very similar thing. Depending on where we start and where we end can make things more difficult or more easy. Again, we also have this compound curve right around here at this corner, and then this tapers off down here, which is not too bad actually. This is the easier section right here. So this is the crazy curve right here. This is the big deal. And this top corner is the big deal right here. What we need to do is, and this bottom corner and this bottom corner. So what we do need to do is we need to mask off the surrounding area. If we're not masking off this area, what's gonna happen is the film is gonna stick to it. We're gonna try to push in at the edge here, and then the film is gonna pull back. So in order to avoid this, we need to mask the area so we can alleviate the tension from the edge when we heat, and that's gonna help ensure that we know that there's no tension on the edge. On top of that, we have this little protrusion thing here. This is not too crazy. The film will hold up in that area, no problem. First things first, we're going to clean off the area and then we're going to mask the area. So we're gonna take our isopropyl alcohol, we're gonna take our clean rag. I'm going to mist it on the surface of the cloth, microfiber cloth, and we're going to give this a good cleaning. So we clean the surface. We don't wanna leave excess isopropyl alcohol behind, so make sure it's not dripping off of anything. Next, I'm going to take my, clean, my uh, firm edge squeegee or hard edge squeegee, which is your gold one. We're gonna take it and we're gonna go around all the edges, just like this. This is gonna help get anything off from an edge that might still be there, a little wax, maybe from waxing the truck, who knows. What I also wanna do is wipe a little bit there just to make sure there's no dust kicking around and we're gonna wipe off that outer perimeter slightly. We're good to go. Take your masking tape and mask off your surrounding area. I like to use something that's a little bit more pliable so having a higher end masking tape does tend to help. Normally I use uh, 301 plus, you'll see it's yellow. I didn't get any this time so I have just regular 3M painters Blue painter's tape, scotch blue, that's what it's called. Nothing crazy. I like to tuck the, the uh, tape in just slightly behind the edge of the light if possible. And I'll show you what this looks like as soon as I finish. The 
The more we mask off around, the less chance of resistance of the film sticking to the opposing panel. When the film sticks to the opposing panel, we're going to run into an issue of tension, okay? Right off the bat. Whenever you're doing stuff like this, it's very important that we alleviate tension. I'll put an extra layer just slightly above it. Oops, lost that one. I pull the tape tight and it allows me to kind of stretch it and contour it a bit. These tail lights are not easy, okay? These are going to be difficult and it might take me more than one try to do these. I've never done them before. What I want to show you here is the tape being tucked in slightly behind the light. It doesn't have to be, but it does help a little bit. We just want to make sure that we're not overlapping the light itself. So I'm going to bring the camera over to this side. Got a little piece of something underneath it. bunch of shot underneath it. So we're going to take our piece of vinyl and we're going to see that this area is not too wide. Uh, it's more tall than it is wide. And just sort of ballpark what we need, giving ourselves extra on the ends. The film that I have is 24 inches. And then we're going to take this piece and just roll it back slightly to uncurl it. It's been sitting for a while, right? It's going to hold the shape that it was in. So I'm just going to roll that up back reverse and then unroll it and it should come out a lot more flat. Perfect, that makes it easier to remove the liner. Start somewhere in the middle here. Oh, need to do that. Let's get it into position. Again, we'll try that again. down slightly. This gets it into the shape that I want. And I lock it into the opposing panel. So I'm going to squeegee in some of this recessed area on the top. That's good. That's done. Some on the bottom. Basically just getting it laid in there slightly before stretching it in too much, okay? We don't want to stretch it in too much. Lock all that in down here. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our heat and we're going to stretch this around the light. Keep in mind where I heat this and how much I'm heating it. We've got to pull aggressively but not too far past the edge, okay? And we want to make sure we're starting with a nice flat area. So I'm going to anchor that down there. It seems pretty hot, and then we're just going to pull it across. I'm going to lock it in to the opposing panel. 
This is very important. And I'm pulling it down to the corner of the light down here. I'm using my hands to lock all that in. And let's get it squeegeed from this body line. We can do anything from this body line basically because from this body line down because it's all nice and smooth. I'm going to open up this end. Perfect. What you're going to notice is that there are little tiny dots in the light. Uh, there's like, they're, they're very symmetrically spaced. There's one on this one and one on the other one. Those are like casting points for the mold, okay? Just so you know. People might ask you about that or you might be wondering about that yourself. So we want to get the air out of this area here. Sometimes because it's sealed, this requires me to poke a hole somewhere. So I have an air release tool. We just poke a hole and then we feed the air out to that hole. There's a casting point right there. Just be careful when we do this. Truck lights can be pretty darn difficult. So keep that in mind when you're doing these. So it's sealed up on me. i poke one more hole. There we go. Looks clean. Time to do the outer edges. You can see how tight it is across the top and the bottom. This is very important for the purpose of the film shrinking down and around. So I'm going to lift it here. I'm going to heat the bottom. I'm just going to keep a little tension on it. It's going to shrink and pull itself down and around that bottom edge. Very important is doing this, guys, because if it's not, you're going to end up stretching to the edge. And what's going to happen is it's going to fail. I'll pull that back a little bit more. You don't want to squeegee the film when it's too hot either, right? So you want to give it a little bit of time to cool down. And just kind of hold it in its place. I'll take my hard edge squeegee right now, switch it from the green one. I'm going to heat it one more time on the bottom. Make sure nothing is pulling back, okay? I'm going to let it sit there for a second, and then we're going to tuck. Perfect. Let's do the top. We're almost ready to trim this out. So we've got to get it off the outer perimeter, right here. And you're going to see the film is already hugging in, right? This is perfect. So we're going to heat, and I want to keep it balanced. And it just shrunk down around that top edge. You have no idea how important this is, guys. If it's not doing this, you're going to end up stretching to the edge. I have no wrinkles pointing down from the edge. All my wrinkles are pointing across the edge, which means the film is wanting to grab around the edge. So I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to do some a cut here where the tape is because right now I have too much film. It's good to get rid of some. There we go. I'll even just let this kind of sit there. Well, you can watch what happens when I heat it. It's not possible for the vinyl to pull back right now because it just shrunk down and around. This is pretty much the only way that you can tint something like this, is using the, using the film's memory to work for you, not against you. I'm gonna come out to this corner here. I have to do a 3D stretch. So I have to pull outwards and back towards me to get it around the corner of the light. I'm going to cut some back so that I'm only sitting on the tape. Because again, any resistance is going to, be, is going to make it difficult. So what I have to do here is heat it, keep it out here, heat it. I'm going to expand it outwards and then bring it down to that edge. 
I'm gonna start locking it in slightly. Once it cools a little bit, which it has already, we take our vinyl, we lift it off of the tape, we start feeding it in a bit. And as we get closer to the edge, we can end up shrinking it down and around. Hopefully we stretched it enough. So always, always, always minimizing tension on the edges, guys. Let's go heat it over here. Cool. Shrunk down really nicely. I'm good with that. This way I know it's not going to pull off the edge. If we have wrinkles pointing from the edge down into the light, this is a bad thing. It's a bad sign. Well, the rest here is pretty straightforward. We can just squeegee sort of down here. The film has a pre-shrinking effect. So when we heat it without even any stretch on it, it's gonna shrink. So I like to use this pre-shrinking right around the edges all the time. This locks everything down and around really nicely. Okay, so this light is pretty much tinted. I have a little section here on the inside of the tailgate and we're good. We're gonna go over everything before we do anything. I'm just gonna check up down here a little bit. Didn't feel like that was totally what I wanted. Cool. Excellent, we're good now. Let me check it one more time. Perfect. Down in here, I'm gonna let the film shrink down and around the inside of this area here, on this little last edge. Um, the reason why it's shrinking down around the edge is because when I pulled the film across, this way I was also expanding. So this creates tension coming across this edge right here. So I'm gonna alleviate it off the tailgate. Again, very important. Right there, let the film pull back. And then we can start getting it tucked in. If I really want to, can I open this tailgate right now? Nope. If I really wanted to, I can open the tailgate, pull the film through a little bit nicer if you're concerned about that. I'm gonna get rid of some vinyl here. Do it again. Expand outwards. And then I let the film cool, and then I push it down and around. Always heating and shrinking to make sure. Okay, we're down and around. When it comes to cutting the rest of this, it's not imperative to wrap all the way around the edges, guys. You can if you really want to. Um, I mean, you can take this off and wrap around it if you're uncertain, but it's not that important to, because if we do this correctly, we're not gonna have any pullback from the edge. If you're worried that you might have pullback in one particular area, then wrap that particular area around a little further. But normally we don't really need to. So again, we'll just blast this one more time with a bit of heat. Make sure everything's shrinking down and around. It's all looking good. This is ready to cut. We'll let it cool for a slight second here because cutting hot film is difficult. And then I'm just gonna run my blade on the tail light. Not on the actual paint itself. And I'll show you what this looks like in about two minutes. So back side of the light, there's usually a nice little gap here. It's not always true that there's a nice little gap here, so some lights fit a little bit tighter than others. Let's see what's going on here. It wasn't quite around the edge. There we go. But some lights fit a little tighter than others, so it really depends on the vehicle. There we go. You'll 
hear the film, the rubber film, kind of making a sound there. Take your time when you come around bends. This is important. This is where it gets tricky. I don't use a lot of blade inside the area, just a tiny bit. We're going to go over it with heat, and that's pretty much your tail light tinted. I just have the other inner edge to trim off, but to keep the video a little shorter, I'm just going to show you, you guys will get the full effect right now. Just lock in all these edges, seal everything down really nicely. little air there, missed the spot when I was squeegeeing, no big deal. We have air release tin, so we can squeegee that out really easily. Casting point here, casting point here, so you're going to see two little dots. If you, if you happen or are able to catch them in camera, you're going to see a dot here and a dot here. 